Let's dive deeper into all of this with commentator Brad Palumbo. Brad, it's great to speak with you. What a week, what a roller coaster of emotions we've all been on. But let's start with the failure of the Secret Service. It seems every day we're learning more and more about what happened and more and more about their failures. What do you make of it? It's the big failing I've ever seen. And honestly, the incompetence and ineptitude is staggering. It reaches a proportion I didn't know was possible for a supposedly elite federal law enforcement agency. Everything from them having flagged the shooter as a person of interest well before the shooting to have the shooter having been spotted, having people tell officers that, hey, there's a guy up there with a gun for minutes before the actual shot gets fired, and then all, it comes down to essentially a stroke of luck. Donald Trump turning his head at the exact second, and thank God he did, because I would be so worried about our country right mm -hmm. now if he had been killed. And no matter whether you support him or not, Nobody should ever want something like that to happen. But the Secret Service to have decided not to station somebody on the roof because for the roof because it was slightly sloped. Are you joking? Is this is this funny? I mean, that's that doesn't make any sense. It's they go on sloped roofs all the time, and securing the president and preventing him from getting shot at by a sniper is a little bit more important than risking an injury from the Secret Service having to go out on a sloped roof. I mean, Secret Service agents had to jump in front of bullets. So if you ask me, what's more dangerous here? I mean, mm. the Secret Service has a huge reckoning that it needs to have and it needs to be heavily investigated to find out how did this happen? Because this is a failure of truly epic proportions. And that is the, the key question. How did this happen? And it, we cannot let this happen again. There needs to be a full investigation, obviously, and that is happening. But what we have heard from the Secret Service Director, Kimberly Cheadle, who was appointed to the role by President Joe Biden in 2022 and is reportedly friends with, with Jill Biden, under her direction, the agency set a 30% quota for female hires. Now, not target, but quota. Let's take a look. To expand hiring, they're aiming to have 30% women recruits by 2030 and even allowed YouTube influencer Michelle Carey to train with agents. But I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates. You know, as a woman who believes in equality, I don't see the value in this to the point it could actually be a little bit dangerous because at the risk of stating the obvious, we are built differently to men. What do you make of this quota? It's identity politics insanity to the point of, like you said, actually being dangerous. I mean, look, I think women should be able to compete just like men for any other job. I would never support sexist discrimination in the Secret Service or anything else. But women and men are built differently. And the Secret Service, in pursuit of identity politics and uh, feminist quotas, it instituted lower physical standards for female officers. They don't have to meet the same mile and a half runtime, the same number of sit-ups, of push-ups, of crunches, these kinds of things. And that makes no sense. If women can meet the same standard that is necessary for the job, then of course they should be able to be agents. If there mm. needs to be a height requirement, then men or women who meet the height requirement should be allowed to be it. And you know what? That might mean that you don't have 30... 50%, you don't have perfect equality or equity. Mm. But you know what? That's okay. When it comes to matters of literal life and death, like who's going to be protecting the president and the vice president and the first lady? And there is an important role for some female Secret Service officers of in, for example, the protection of the first lady. You don't want men going into the bathroom with her, right? But to have identity politics at the forefront of your operations as a supposedly elite security force is madness. Merit should only be, this should be the only consideration because we're literally talking about matters of life and death here. Absolutely, well said. Now look, we've been hearing from the Democrats that we need to tone down the language. And of course, the rhetoric has become too heated, but let's look at the Democrats who actually tried to strip Donald Trump of his Secret Service protection. Just three months ago, Mississippi Congressman Benny Thompson introduced legislation designed to strip 
convicted felons, a.k.a. Donald Trump, of Secret Service protection, which was supported by other Democrats, including Jasmine Crockett. It's no wonder that people were not all that surprised that someone tried to take a shot at Donald Trump when there have been people openly calling for his protection to go. What do you make of this? How sick and twisted do you have to be to want to remove security protection from your political opponents so that they're at the mercy of would-be assassins? I mean, I disagree with a lot of people very strongly. I don't ever want to see harm come to them or their families. Absolutely. To actually use your status as a member of Congress to try to take away this, the, the Secret Service protection of a Republican ex-president, it's just a... a deeply morally questionable thing to do. It doesn't cost them anything to have him have Secret Service protection. It costs taxpayers, but that's actually the rare thing I'm happy to pay for the government to do. Uh, but for them to go out of their way in pursuit of a partisan, vindictive vendetta against Trump to endanger the safety of not just him, but of his family and of the other people at that rally. I mean, if he hadn't had Secret Service there, what would have? nothing would have stopped the shooter from shooting again until he hit the president. I mean, the Secret Service were valiant and courageous in the sense that many of the officers stepped up in front of the president and put their bodies on the line. They totally botched many strategic and tactical things. But to not have Secret Service for an ex-president just because you hate him is a delusional, dangerous, and deeply evil thing to try to do. I mean, to me, it just shows how partisan and how tribal and just vindictive some people in our politics have become. It's really disturbing stuff. Absolutely. Well said. Now, let's look at some of the reaction to what happened on Saturday, because most people who were kind-hearted kind had been praying for Donald Trump and for his family, because what happened on Saturday was absolutely shocking. But unfortunately, that's not the reaction we are seeing from everyone. Let's take a look. Do you condemn the shooter shooting Donald Trump? No. Not, wow. not here, not on this program, not in front of these wow. people. Absolutely you do not, not condemn a deranged shooter shooting you are, Donald Trump. You are truly Trump. just a child. This is not a, actually, this is this not all, a competition no, you know here. What, We're Charlie, just trying to be decent human beings. You know beings. what, Charlie? It's not actually the behaviour of a child. It's, it's, a, it's the behaviour of somebody who's completely lost his moral compass. And how charming is this person who said they are sad that the shooter missed? Absolutely. You guys are out here on the heels of the attempted Trump assassination. Um, can I get your reaction to what happened the other day? Well, it's a shame the person missed, but um, it's ironic that the shooter was also a Republican. Brad, I see that and I feel really shocked and I feel conflicted about even playing it on this show because I don't want to give them airtime but at the same time we have to call this out because there is a real dangerous tone that exists where people don't see Donald Trump as a human being anymore. I've had hate mail for standing up for the fact that he wasn't killed on Saturday. It is just unbelievable. Yeah, it is. And the irony is not lost on me that, that the second person you showed has the rainbow bandana around her face. So much love, so much tolerance, so much progress, right? I mean, look, you have to be sick and twisted to want to see your political opponents die. And we're not just even talking about Trump, though, of course, that applies to him. We're talking about an innocent man who was killed in the background, literally shielding his children with his body from bullets. A man who was a father, who was a a volunteer firefighter lost his life. And you have people like Destiny, the liberal YouTuber with millions of followers that you played uh, in that clip there, you have them basically saying they don't care because they support Trump and Trump really bad. And to me, it's sick and it's twisted. It shows that how tribalism and partisanship can rot and corrode not one's, not just one's brain, but also one's soul. Because if you become, and they say, well, Republicans won't condemn political violence, and that might be true for some Republicans out there, but it's literally kindergarten level morality. Two wrongs don't make a right. And you're not supposed to descend into the mud with people and become everything you say you're against. But that's what we're seeing. That is what we're seeing some people do after this tragedy. I mean, are we really at the point where people can't just condemn an attempted assassination? Yeah. Your moral compass is just 
broken beyond repair if you find yourself in that situation. Although I am grateful that I would say most mainstream Democrats have, of course, and this is an extremely low bar, like I can't believe we're even here, but most mainstream Democrats uh, in terms of elected officials have condemned the shooting and wished Trump well. And obviously that's an incredibly low bar, but at least they didn't trip over it.